so I'm very happy to present to you today the future of dating. Uh, the future of dating is all about content and content powering being powered by headshots. So first of all, just quick background on myself. Uh, my name is Adam Cohen Aslati. I'm the CEO and founder of S'more. Uh, I've also been in the industry since 2008, and I've had the pleasure of working for companies that include the Meat Group, I worked for Raya and Zeusk, and most recently, prior to starting S'more, I was the managing director or a managing director at Bumble running their Chappie brand. So I've been in the industry for quite a long time. And uh, you know, I started a new company called S'more a couple of years ago. And in starting the new company, I really had to take a look at what the industry landscape looked like. And for me, the industry really hadn't changed very much over the last 10 years. So today's presentation is really all about what is the evolution of an industry that hasn't changed very much in a pretty long time? So our thesis is relationships powered by content, not headshots, um, a social network for singles. So dating 3.0, the dawn of a new era. You might have used dating apps in the last two, three, four, five years and seen slight iterations on product. Um, the basic forum of a dating app today is all centered around the profile. And in order for these apps to work, regardless of what cool shiny feature the app has or any new kind of dating product, you need a huge number of users, um, whether they're a specialized user or a mass population in a geographical density to achieve success. And so one of the, one of the reasons why there, you don't see a lot of new startups becoming large companies is because to achieve success really requires a lot of people on an app. And so the future of dating hasn't really changed because it's been controlled by some of the largest uh, dating conglomerates for quite a long time, but things are changing. So let me take you back to 2015. Guys, dating in 2015 was so much fun, infinite swiping, casual encounters. You can date while you're on the toilet, limitless options, or so it appeared. And so Dating for millennials actually had a majorly a major large impact, right? Because prior to dating apps, there were dating websites, but young people didn't really use dating websites. That was reserved for older demographics. And so young people were meeting at school, meeting at the gym, meeting IRL. But dating apps changed everything. Dating apps told the world that there are a million fish in the sea. And it's true. There were a lot of people out there using dating products. But here's one of the big challenges. 81% of singles have not found a long-term relationship or what they would say that they have not found success on dating apps. And this is a study that was done last year. So if you think about this, 81% of singles are telling you that they have not achieved success on these products. So my question to all of you is, if your vaccine was only 19% effective, would you have taken a vaccine? I wouldn't have, maybe you guys would have. And so it really goes to why aren't these apps more successful? If there are so many people on them, if there's so many ways to filter, why haven't more people found success on dating apps? By the way, I'm not saying that most people don't meet online. I'm just really talking about the dating app ecosystem. Um, there's a, a slew of issues that we face as an industry. And Mark has covered this in many of his sessions in the past. Data and security is a big one. Um, but honestly, ghosting, people just not responding to messages, people getting too few or too many messages, people getting filtered out, what have you. Just based on the number of people using these products, we should have created many more relationships than we have, and we have not. And so the question is, why haven't dating apps been more successful to singles? They've clearly been successful to very large companies. There's publicly traded companies making billions of dollars a year, um, but for users, it's left us frustrated and looking for something more. Michelle Obama literally quoted on her podcast last year, telling people, young people, you can't Tinder your way into a relationship, which to me also means relationships take work. Now, one of the reasons why our industry hasn't seen much innovation, I, I kind of boil it down to five main reasons. And this is important because this goes to the future of our industry. The future of dating is not going to be led by Bumble, Tinder, or Hinge, or any of the products that you know today, any of the big companies. It's going to be owned and championed by a new set of apps that focus on a different type of a user and different type of behavior. And we'll get to that in a second. 
But the reason why we haven't seen so much innovation up till today is five main reasons. Reason number one, industry consolidation. Why does this even matter? Well, because in order for your app to be visible, right, you need awareness of your app before anyone's installing your app. People are companies, these consolidated companies are spending literally hundreds of millions of dollars per year buying out all the keywords, making sure they're on all of these affiliate network websites and really taking all the low hanging fruit, making it very hard for a new competitor to enter the space. Now you might say, okay, well, social media levels the playing field. That's not necessarily true. Your videos can have millions of views on TikTok and you get zero installs from that. Those networks still make it very difficult to install from branded content. Uh, number two is the network effect. Unlike in the social media realm, in the social media realm, if your app is, if you're a social app, if you're for friends, if you're trying to build new relationships with everyone, and you like the experience, it's very easy to grow those networks because there's something called a referral tab, which allows you to invite your entire social network to the app. And that functionality works really well, but that functionality does not work in the dating world. If you're a single person, you're not scraping your contact list to add them to the dating app because you don't really wanna date your friends or friends of friends, generally speaking, right? There's one or two apps that do. Plus. A lot of your friends are in relationships, so it's not an easy kind of add into the app. In order for the network effect in the dating space to work, literally requires millions of dollars to bring people into the app and probably hundreds of thousands of MAUs to just prove out the concept that your app functionality works. Number three is gamification. So gamification, and by the gamification, I really mean the swipe. The swipe changed the dating game in a really major way. It made dating really fun, really easy. You know, you don't have to do very much and you can see a million people. You can chat with a million people. And the mechanic is so strong and so addictive that really very little innovation was needed. The time on app was high. The number of sessions was high. And it also monetized really well. Um, the dating industry is also very underinvested. So the dating space it gets one one hundredth of the investment from VCs I'm talking about in this case uh, compared to the gaming industry. Yet the dating industry actually monetizes better per user than the gaming industry because daters and singles are much more intentional and willing to pay for those services. Um, and finally, monetization, right? Monetization works really well with the swipe. It's very dependable. It's very reliable. You know, after a certain number of swipes, people will pay more, a certain number of rewinds, people will pay more. These things work. So why innovate on something that's generating a lot of money and a lot of organic installs? But here's the thing, something really big changed in 2019. And I think the change was coming, right? We already were frustrated with these apps. We said we hated them, right? And then if you look at the research, the average users is downloading and deleting Bumble, Tinder and Hinge four times a month. So it feels like this necessary evil. Something big changed in 2019. So first of all, millennials were beginning to get into another life stage. They were getting to be in their 40s uh, and looking for more serious relationships. Gen Zers were coming of age. They were turning 18, 19, 20, 21, and they were starting to want to date. But for them, Bumble, Tinder, Hinge, the, the typical apps that you would think about were less interesting in general to them. Social unrest. So in this country, in the US and globally, we were talking about Black Lives Matter and um, Asian lives in, in America and what it meant to be someone other than Caucasian or other than a straight white guy. And so having these cultural conversations also impacted the kind of apps that we were using. A global pandemic. Look, we thought that we were such a social body of people, right? All of a sudden, we're alone in our apartments. We're not in a relationship. We're sad. We're lonely. We're depressed. We have swipe fatigue mental health issues. And what started to happen in 2019 is the dating app started to raise money. S'more was one of them, but there are probably four or five other apps um, that raised just as much, if not more than S'more. And this is, is pretty unique because we raised the most money for new startups in our space uh, in the last decade. And that happened in 2019. In a post COVID world, majority of daters are saying they're looking for something more intentional. And this is not an older demographic. This cuts across demographics. Even on Bumble, their users are saying, we want more intention relationships. We're looking for LTRs. What's so interesting too is with Gen Z, you know, the dating app that succeeds now or the dating apps that succeed are going to be 
really meaningful to a new generation. And in our case, and in, in many cases, that's what the Gen Z. Gen Zers aren't impressed by a good looking person. They can go on any social app, they can go on any dating app and see glamorous people all the time. There are infinite ways to find good looking people. So they're not enamored the way that millennials were with the swipe technology and sort of with the swiping mechanic. But guys, the evolution of dating has finally come. And the evolution of dating is really a transition from transactional dating, which is focused on the profile, right? The whole entire ecosystem of the app is focused on the profile to communities where there is much more to do. There's many more reasons to utilize the app and there's more organic ways to discover someone new. And S'more is championing a new way of meeting people and it's all about the singles community. So here's a quick trailer of what I mean and how our app works today. Okay, let's talk quickly about communities. What do I mean when I use the term community? I think it's really important to define this because so many apps out there, whether they're new apps or legacy dating products, everyone throws around the term community. When I'm saying, when I use the word community, I'm talking about one to many experiences where one person gets to be in a group setting where they get to either participate actively or just view, read, watch, whatever the content may be. So in that vein, S'more is championing a new way of meeting people, and we're really the first social network for singles. So what that, mean is, what that means is everyone's here because they're single. They not necessarily want to date. They just happen to be single. It's a global public forum for singles. So I may want to consume video content. I may want to interact with people on 3D profiles, hear their voice, listen to their favorite music. And as I get to chat with them, I can see more of them, right? So I'm incentivizing the conversation, driving many more chats. I might want to engage in a chat room where on S'more we have ephemeral chat rooms where the content disappears every day. So you can either go in and see who's online in real time, get the instant gratification of a chat. You can discover organically new people. Uh, you can also create content on S'more. So this allows you to use our base video content, make your own, and then share it back onto social media. Uh, we also have features like horoscopes. What's cool about the app that we are creating, right? Because it exists today, but we're continuing to add on these, uh, these community features, is that the way that I date and the way that you date may be very different. And why that's important is because dating apps up until this point have only catered to one way of dating. And it's all about the profile. And honestly, it's all about looks because very few people are reading profiles, especially younger generations. It's 100% focused on looks. And so all these connections that we're making or these supposed connections have all been very surface level and been very superficial. So an app like S'more, while we are a social network for singles, we're also focused on getting people to interact with one another and chat with one another. And so the types of features that we have in our app are very dissimilar from a dating product and actually much more similar to a WeChat or to a Nextdoor, which is another community app. We have things like behavioral scores. We verify 100% of users with a biometric. So there's literally no potential for catfishing on S'more. We have fun features that allow you to look at analytics. I don't call it analytics for users, but essentially you can see how people are interacting with your profile and use the data to make your app even more engaging and more interactive. S'more also now produces the number one celebrity dating show on Instagram with over 10 million views. 
all of that amazing content over 150 hours of exclusive celebrity content is in s'more so people are now watching these videos and seeing who else watched them commented on them and liked the videos and it becomes a much more organic way to meet new people it's not all about the profiles that you recommend to a user in a day so again when i explain s'more and explain the future of the industry to me S'more is much more like Nextdoor or WeChat, but for new relationships, meaning there's many different ways of st stumbling upon someone new, discovering someone new, and getting into the conversation. And it's not just based on looks. But why you guys should care as app developers is that implementing these community features is not only good for the user, but it's actually very good for business. So let me explain it. Let me break it down for you. So. In terms of a user, there are more reasons to use a community app than there are a typical dating app, right? Therefore, I might go on because I want to chat with people or consume content or create content or be in a chat room. And for a business, that means more app sessions. There's more than just profiles on profiles and photos to look at. There's much more to do, which is higher engagement rates, which means every user is taking more actions in a session than they would on a typical swipe app, which is just about swiping. There's likes, there's comments, there's uh, video views, there's actual chatting, there's time spent in chatting. There's just way more going on. There's also more ability for organic discovery. So when you are giving users matches on typical apps, they're spending two seconds max on a profile. But with communities, there's way more content to discover. And the content is literally what connects the two people. So that also equals more time on app. These community features also depend less on proximity. And so what's cool about that is the churn in your app will be much lower if you implement these community features. Um, there's more ways to transact and unlock things. So if you are a company like S'more who also produces its own show, there's also different ways to monetize. It's not just based on subscriptions. In fact, on S'more, we're now monetizing our dating show through syndicating it to Snapchat. Snapchat's literally paying us for our video content. So there's many more ways in which you can monetize. And for all the startups out there who are raising money and, and having a tough time, look, guys, this is a really hard, probably one of the most hard spaces to raise money in um, because the apps that came, the apps that came before, before us, excuse me, really screwed things up. I mean, I have to say it in, in the plainest terms. They used all that money. They pumped money into really not that great features and not focused on really growing the audience. In our industry, we need audience to show proof of concept. We need scale of audience to show proof of concept. Therefore, when you integrate these community features or if you're a community app like S'more, it's much easier to get funding because you're more than just a single featured product. Your place where people hang out, spend time, higher engagement, and all these companies on the screen are communities that have raised money in the last two years at billion dollar valuations. But communities are also vitally important to our industry because let's be honest, the demographics have changed. The user behavior has changed dramatically in the last 10 years. So 73% of Gen Zers in Canada say that they don't use or have never used Tinder or Bumble. 50% of online daters say they would date someone outside of their city limits. 85% of singles, again, would date someone outside of their ethnicity. 40% uh, of people on Nextdoor, which is not even a dating product, are single. And 74% of people on dating apps are looking for more dynamic experiences. The static looking at a profile and matching and meeting is really yesteryear. The future of our industry is much more about community, much more about conversation and much more about activities to get to know someone new. Uh, kind of wanted to illustrate a little bit more about when we think about communities, why is this so important for us and why is it really a game changer, both from a company standpoint, a user enjoyment standpoint, and also how do you raise money uh, in this environment? So when we talk about S'more being the first social network for singles, We've actually powered our app with content that serves a huge purpose and a huge differentiator. So first of all, yes, we're an app that diminishes looks, but our app also produces this celebrity dating show that I mentioned. Well, our celebrity dating show is now the number one show on Instagram uh, and 
again, 10 million views. Now that's great for awareness. And as we all know, as companies, we want to stay relevant and in the news all the time, but we've actually used the content in many more ways. We've taken the content and used all of the data, all the viewership data for lookalike targeting. And that's really important because in a post iOS 14 world, it's very difficult for app developers to use their own data, but we can use the lookalike data from the views of the show in order to get cheap acquisition. Then we take all these amazing videos and we put them inside of our app and it becomes one of the core ways people are meeting each other on S'more. But they're not only watching the videos and discovering other profiles for the videos, they're actually creating content from our videos and then sharing it back onto their social media, flagging to all of their friends that I'm on this really cool app called S'more. And that's what creates the organic installation funnel, which is why we've grown so quickly in the last few years. Um, I want to make sure we have time for questions, so I'll skip a couple. Um, as a company, S'more has been inspiring an industry. Um, I know that we approach dating and relationships very differently from a lot of the companies that I worked for, and I have huge respect for what our industry has done up until this point. But it's going to take a new app and a new concept to get us into a higher growth situation and a place where there's a space for everyone to find someone new and find someone who's cool, find someone who they really vibe with. We've been inspiring an industry and major players, like mentioned on the screen here. Tinder recently launched a blind date feature, similar to S'more, where the more you chat with a person, the more of them you see. Muzzmatch has a really cool feature that blurs women's faces if they choose to, and they can decide when to expose themselves to a guy. Uh, Meet Me has a blind dating feature. Hinge added voice notes recently to their profile. We did that about two years ago. Grinder added locked photo albums. We also launched with that about two years ago. So we've championed a lot of features that other apps are seeing as it works. These collection of features really work to drive engagement and also enjoyment of your product. And that's probably one of the reasons why in the last 18 months post beta, S'more has become the number five most recommended product on the app store. And this is an Apple editorial um, uh, screenshot here. So now while I did say that the future of dating is communities, the future of meeting people, single people meeting is communities, it still remains to be seen if money of these larger companies can pivot into communities. My guess is probably not. While they can add in a community feature, add in a chat room, the main utility of these apps is casual encounters and they make billions of dollars from it. So I doubt that they're going to pivot away from it. Um, which allows us uh, as a new generation of apps, a huge opportunity to elevate the industry and bring us into a new direction. And why I'm so excited about this is actually because 50% of American singles don't even use a dating product, which means this graph here, which is increasing the market by 40% in the next five years, actually may increase by over 80% if we can get some of those singles who currently do not use dating products back into this environment? Can we enlarge the pie and bring more people in? And I believe we can, and I believe apps like S'more are doing just that. So the future of our industry is, is community. It's all about getting to know a person. It's all about organic discovery. And we're happy to be championing uh, this new method of people meeting. And finally, if you none of you have seen or if you guys have not heard of our celebrity dating show, now you can catch it on Snapchat in a new channel called S'more. Uh, which is a celebrity dating show and uh, and it's a good reflection representation of how we're actually monetizing that content.